Okay, hopefully this is going to bring some clarification to the problem we were working on in class today that we didn't quite finish that will help um, bring clarity to comparative advantage, absolute advantage, and uh, benefits of trade between the United States and Scotland when we were looking at the example of oats and bagpipes. I believe this is number four on the worksheet we were looking at. So let's get started. Looking at the trading, uh, the opportunity cost table that we have here, we can identify that this is going to be an example of an input uh, conditions and that we are looking now at uh, those opportunity costs in terms of those input um, outcomes. And so when we do our shortcut method and do the cross multiplying, we're looking for the lower number. Not, and again, if it was an output, we'd be looking for the higher number. So we have 15 and 8, and so we can identify that Scotland's going to take uh, have a lower opportunity cost. That's how, what you'd want to state as you, if you were in the uh, AP exam, that Scotland has a lower opportunity cost in producing oats. The United States has a lower opportunity cost in producing bagpipes. Now, what that would mean is that as we move into this trading relationship um, and we have the terms of trade being one bagpipe to one ton of oats, um, this, that Scotland's going to be specializing in oats. Uh, the United States will be, be specializing in bagpipes. And the trading relationship will be based on that, the terms of trade that are highlighted in the question. Another part of that question is that they also highlight that there's a production period of 60 hours. So what that helps us do is create a PPC for Scotland uh, looking at their specialization before trade. So if we were to look at Scotland and say that for four hours uh, they can produce oat, one ton of oats, that means that they could produce 15 tons of oats in that production period, or they could produce 12 units or 12 bagpipes. Now, what that would look like is we, if we were to plot our production possibilities curve is to simply draw those extremes. If, in, if Scotland is specializing in either of those goods, that is what the PPC would look like. However, we know that there's going to be, these, there's going to be trade and they are going to be speciali specializing in oats, which then means that they are going to be assuming that ter those terms of trade that um, Scotland will be producing at a point at 15-0. We also know from the problem that they said Scotland would like to re have six bagpipes as a result of the trading relationship. Uh, given that it's one-to-one, -one, we know that they're going to give up six tons of oats in order to, uh, to accomplish that. And so when we looked at the original problem, it said that Scotland was sitting at a point where Without trade, they were right at the middle of their PPC. But with their new, this new trading relationship, we can look at, with specialization, they actually create what's called a new a, a CPC. And what that represents is an absolute um, terms. If they had produced specialized in oats, that would be 15 tons. But if they technically could continue to specialize in oats but trade all of them for 15 bagpipes. So it creates a new P, a CPC or the consumption possibilities curve for, for Scotland. And what that would, would show us is that when we look at as a result of trade, having given up six oats, we would be at a point you know, at nine. And in, in return, they're also getting um, six, in, in this case, six bagpipes. Now, my CPC was a little bit off. But we have a new point of trade as a result of trade with the United States. Um, that is beyond the original PPC of Scotland and makes, and yet um, is a result of, or a reflection of the benefits of trade. So hopefully that helps clarify where we were a little bit with that problem in class. Um, I will make it post another video here for the last problem, and hopefully that will again help um, clarify some of the things we didn't quite get to before the end of the week.